Just a few days ago at I.O. 2019, Google launched the Pixel 3a and 3a XL. With this launch, we of course want to see how they're going to deliver when it comes to gaming. Both are running the Qualcomm Snapdragon 670 with 4GB of RAM, so let's go ahead and see how they perform. What is up guys, I hope everyone is doing well. I am back with yet another in-depth gaming test on a mobile device. So as you know, in my test, I do have the FPS up on the screen, so you guys can see exactly how it performs. We will of course be checking out the temps and the battery drain on both of these devices. So while they are running the same chipset and have the same RAM, there are a few differences. Obviously one has a bigger screen at 6 inches versus the 5.56 inch and one has a larger battery at 3700 milliamp hours versus 3000. So it will be good to see just what the differences is in case you guys are going to go ahead and pick these up. So let's not waste any time and get into it. So first off we're going to go ahead and play some Asphalt and if we hop into the menu you will see that I have set it to performance graphics. So as you can probably tell, Asphalt does run like a champion on both of these devices and has an average FPS of 30, which is absolutely fine and what it's capped out at. Moving on to PUBG, if we jump into the settings, you will see that I have chosen to go with the high preset, so let's go ahead and see how it performs. So as you can see we got a solid 38 frames per second and the gameplay was super smooth, I really had no issues at all, but as always if we go ahead and install graphics tool we can get the FPS to go to an average of 39 and obviously going over 40 in some scenarios which I definitely think is worthwhile doing. If you want to see that video I will leave it linked down below in case you guys want to go ahead and check it out. Okay, so moving on to a fan favourite, and that is of course Fortnite. As you can see, if we go into the settings, it won't let us select any other setting other than low, and the highest FPS that we can set it at is 30 frames per second, but when you load up the game, it looks like absolute hot garbage, and the highest FPS that we can get is around 16. Honestly, I would avoid playing this game on this device. I'm not really sure what's going on, whether it's not optimised, or whether it's just not capable of playing it, but honestly, it's definitely avoidable if you're a Fortnite fan. And that's a shame as all the other games that we have tested so far have went so well. Okay, so the last game that we are going to look at is one of my favourites. If you've ever seen me doing these gaming tests before, then you will know that I am a massive fan of Critical Ops. <laughs> So the average FPS that we see in this game is 52. It's super smooth, super enjoyable, and I absolutely love playing this game. If you play it, let me know down below and maybe we can jump into a little scrim together. Okay, so let's quickly talk about battery drain. After 30 minutes of solid gaming, the 3A went from 100% all the way down to 87%, while the 3A XL only dropped to 92%. Overall, after 30 minutes of gaming, I don't think that's too terrible. Let me know your thoughts on that down below. When it comes to temperatures, the device does get quite warm around that camera area, hitting 35 degrees centigrade, which is 97 degrees Fahrenheit for those who use that. But overall, holding it in your hands, it doesn't get over warm. I didn't find it getting uncomfortable or sweaty, so I'm not too concerned about it. When it comes to audio performance, both of these handsets do feature dual speakers. We have one in the earpiece and one on the bottom of the handset itself. As long as you don't crank the volume up to its maximum, it does sound okay, 
but when you get over that level, it does start to sound a little bit tinny, so I would definitely avoid cranking it all the way up. Of course, we do have a headphone jack here if you prefer to game with your headphones on like me, and we also can use the audio via the USB-C port and of course Bluetooth, so there are plenty of options here. So that pretty much rounds up this video. Both of these devices are very capable at gaming considering they are a mid-range handset. Obviously, if you're a Fortnite fan, then it's a big no-no, but if you play things like PUBG, Critical Ops, Asphalt, etc, you will not be disappointed. Obviously, I will be delivering a full review of both of these devices, so make sure you stay tuned to the channel, and obviously, if you can, please subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on, as we are nearly at 100,000 subscribers, and I really want to hit that milestone in the coming months, so if you guys can help me out, I would be so thankful. As always, if you have any questions, let me know down below, and I will get back to you. Stay safe, be kind to each other, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace. Thanks for